We want to thank you, our listeners, for your support in making this podcast possible. Blue Buddha Productions is listener-funded, and your contributions allow us to continue bringing you remarkable content like this. If you would like to support us, you can donate through PayPal at elliot.bluebuddhaproductions at gmail.com. Remember there is only one L and one T in Elliot. Your generosity helps us create more transformative experiences for you to enjoy. Thank you for being a part of our journey. Now, let's immerse ourselves in the extraordinary world of the Zoom sessions with your host Elliot Goldstein, brought to you by Blue Buddha Productions. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce you to a true icon of the entertainment world. With a career spanning decades, Catherine Lee Scott has left an indelible mark on film, television, and literature. She's best known for her iconic role as Maggie Evans in the legendary TV series Dark Shadows, a role that captivated audiences and solidified her status as a beloved figure in the realm of gothic horror. Beyond her acting prowess, Catherine is also a celebrated author, with numerous books to her name, including novels, memoirs, and non-fiction works. Her talent, charm, and enduring presence continue to inspire and entertain fans around the globe. Join me in welcoming the remarkable Catherine Lee Scott. Dark Shadows, everybody knows about Dark Shadows. That's pretty much... um all over the place that's not what you're um that's not what i want to talk to you about you've you've um had a successful career in both tv and theater and um ha- the experience of performing on the stage it, does that differ well it's not you really didn't do stage you did more movie right you know i've done almost everything in performing arts i've done i've done a lot of radio drama and uh-huh. stage and and uh and certainly television i've done long form and short form right. uh I've done big extravagant films i've also done small independent ones and um and of course my first job was on dark shadows right. and i think that was uh absolutely fabulous training i'd done some theater of course before that i'd done some off off broadway and a lot of high school and college productions but um, going on Dark Shadows, which back in the day, you know, was live. Yeah. All 1,225 performances of Dark Shadows were done live, which meant that there was no editing. It meant that when we started our half hour show, we worked straight through. The commercials were fed in. If we had costume changes, we did our costume changes behind yeah. scenery. Uh, it was very much like doing summer stock. And you had a you double role. And you had a double. Yeah, you learned the lines in the morning, and then yeah. uh, by the afternoon, maybe six hours later, you were on camera performing live, which is like, which is very much like summer stock, where you're, right. you know, you've got a couple of days to learn your lines, rehearse, and and the show is up. And you had a double role in that. I had four roles on Dark yeah. Shadows. Yeah, but two and really two and two because. Uh, you know, I'd I'd, uh, I'd studied at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and uh-huh. and this was my first job upon graduating. What's amazing, of course, is that as a young actress, I was actually doing all of the work that I had learned to do in in uh, in class, which was right. you know, costume drama. I'd done Strindberg and Str- uh, Chekhov, Shakespeare, restoration comedy. And there were elements of all of those things in Dark Shadows because we did what amounted to an anthology series of great literature. Yes. I'm sure your listeners are well aware that we did did stories based on Turn of the Screw and Picture of Dorian Gray and Wuthering Heights. And and you you guys were ahead of the curve on that whole vampire thing. It it kind of caught up later. No, no, I think Jonathan you know, Brent yeah. was probably the grandfather of uh, of all of these contemporary vampires, sure. and you know, Lestat and, and all that stuff. And paranormal before anybody was doing it. Right, 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 right. So um, you guys are ahead of the curve on that one. I know, you know, um, Anne Rice made a career out of pretty much what Dark Shadows did. I, you know, she did acknowledge that, but yeah. also, you know, the uh, the fellow from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and and. Uh-huh. Uh, and the um, 
and so many of the other shows, they acknowledged it. And I, I worked with a couple of directors. I think they brought me into audition because <laughs> they've been fans of Dark Shadows. But, you know, all of that, um, that CGI right. that is commonplace now, uh, and all of the AI and so on, that didn't exist when we were doing these shows 55 years ago. No, I so know. So if there was a special effect, we did it. I, famously, uh, the bat that swooped in and out of scenes, uh, that was a little paper uh, bat that was attached to a fishing line, attached to a, a fishing pole, <laughs> attached to the arm of a It's kind of, kind of like Ed Wood stuff, right? Oh, very much. Yeah, but, yeah, I, like I, wondered, Wood, yeah. I always wondered if uh, Ed Wood was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ed, yeah, yeah, Ed, Ed, Ed Wood. So, um, outside of Dark Shadows, you're an author. I am an author. I, yep. as a matter of fact, my very first book was about Dark Shadows, right. and now, of course, I've got Dark Shadows: Five Decades of Dark Shadows that I've written. But uh, it, it also, I think, getting that book out there. And uh, I've always been a writer, but it, it inspired me to uh, start a publishing company. Uh, so I published a lot of books about uh, entertainment. In fact, my catalog is all nonfiction entertainment. Right. And, and then I started writing fiction about uh, 12 years ago. I've, okay. written five, I've written five novels, but a lot of my work is nonfiction. And what's your preference? Fiction, nonfiction? Is there a preference? You know, I don't have a preference. I don't have a preference between stage work and, and film. I don't have a preference between nonfiction and fiction. They, they are slightly different disciplines. Right. Uh, but I really enjoy both. And quite frankly, uh, I like going from one to the other and back and forth. I wrote a book about the 25 year history of the Playboy Clubs because I was a Playboy bunny before you know, when I, when yeah. I was going to the American Academy. And I wrote about that 25 year history. And then I, I produced a two hour documentary based on it for A&E, one hour for uh, British television and one hour for Canadian. And now I'm reissuing that because I, I want to update it. And, and so I'm, uh, in a way, a lot of the things that I started doing 55 years ago, 60 years ago, are still very much a part of my life, and they kind right. of inform uh, the the things that I'm involved with now. So, you were a Playboy bunny. How do you um, how do you relate to what's going on now with the entire hashtag Me Too and um, Oh, you, you know, know that's the, one reason. The, uh, yeah, the woke, the, the whole woke thing, you know. Yeah, but that is a big reason why I'm reissuing the bunny years because right. for so many of us. It was a really positive experience. I sure. mean, when you when you've got young women walking around half naked serving highballs, you know that you have to have rules in place. Right. And uh, all kids, boys and girls, need to learn how to conduct themselves sure. in a working environment. I and spoke. To, you know, I spoke to De Debbie, Har Debbie Harry from Blondie was a bunny as well. well. She was. She was a bunny, and Lauren Hutton and I were yes. hired the same day, and I was in bunny training with Gloria Steinem, and really? she wrote in her piece uh -huh. and i always felt that i did not want to leave that as the gospel of the way things were so right. i wrote my book actually giving voice to uh all the women that i worked with and then women who work in the playboy clubs over that 25 year history and clubs all over the world okay and and i um i have to say i did about close to 300 interviews over a period of about Oh, maybe four years before uh, the book, before I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was really, uh, it was really enlightening because by the time I'd interviewed these women who were 18, 19 years old when they were working at the clubs, uh, they were now in their 50s and some in their 60s. Right. And, uh, uh, and it was really interesting to see how they had used the Playboy Club as a launching pad to start careers, to work their way through school, to figure out <laughs> right. figure out who they were and what they wanted to do. Right. And so many of them were just so successful. And I realized be, it's probably because working at the Playboy Club was sort of on the cutting edge. And, yes. and you really had to know how to handle yourself. And if you didn't, you certainly learned and you used it. Right. 
And no, that's really, uh, th that's really the thrust of uh, the documentary. It's the real thing. All of these other documentaries that we've been seeing lately on Playboy and so on, uh, they talk about bunnies, but very few of the people actually interviewed are bunnies. Very, very little of it is firsthand. And, 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 and I want, yes, I, I, want, I want to get this documentary out there. And it's getting a bad name, you know, the bunny clubs getting a bad, you know, yeah, they, they get a bit uh, of to, really to tell the truth about it, not just uh -huh. go for the uh, salacious bottom feeding uh, right. parts, you know, that are so easy to. I know my, my dad had a key, you know, my father <laughs> had a key to the New York club and, uh, you know, That's uh, work, the New York yeah. club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, anyway, uh, that that is one of the current projects that I'm working on. I'm not going to update the book. Uh -huh. which uh, stands, uh, I think, really, again, historically as a, uh -huh. as a, uh, as a touchstone and in, in certainly in the 20th century. And, uh, uh, and it's a pop culture phenomenon. So yes. I'm glad that the book is, uh, was written, uh, that I wrote it. Um, and I'm, I, uh, I'm glad I could give voice to all of these women. Wow. You know, you, you threw that curve in. I need more than a half hour. <laughs> uh, anyway, no, they, the, uh, the fiction that I've written has really been fun. I wrote one book called Dark Passages, right. and uh, I just took everything that I knew about working on Dark Shadows and doing a live TV show and everything I knew about uh, a, a paranormal show, and I turned it on a gear. Right. The, um, instead of the, the lead, the, the, the um, protagonist being um, a male actor, uh -huh. uh, I, I made the young woman, the ingenue, the actual real life vampire. And okay. it's really a coming of age story. It's, right. uh, you know, how all of us wonder as uh, young people, you know, is everything going, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Um, you know, you, it's first love, is everything going to work? How does, what now, happens? Now that's what, uh, what is that called goth romance? There's a whole- Oh, I don't, you know, oh. Yes, it, it it is. I would probably describe mine as a paranormal romance. Paranormal um, romance, okay. It's not goth. It's um, it's paranormal romance. It's and it's uh. My wife right reads my my, my wife reads that, uh, my wife reads all those books. So oh, she, reads, she should read that one. She, yeah, make sure she does. It. It's one of my favorite books that I've written. Yeah, yeah, because I'm you know every time I you know, every time I see her reading something, oh, it's another you know. <laughs> I'm always like peeking over her shoulder, like, what's this guy doing? You know, it's like, you know, the, the, the so let me up. ask you, did you run home from school to watch? Yes, Dark yes, yes. <laughs> Good for yes. you. In fact, my producer, you know, there are so many fans uh, of Dark Shadows. Of you, you, don't know, you don't know what happened. So you, 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 you've worked as a producer. You did a lot of behind the scenes work as well in entertainment. And um, did you do you prefer acting or producing? You seem to be. Um... Oh no no! I I honestly love it all. Uh, yeah. And 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 again, you know, organically, one thing's you know one thing grows out of the other. I would not have produced if I hadn't written uh, the Bunny Years. Uh, I um, and I, I you know there there are so many things that uh, acting and writing lead to. You find out such a lot about yourself. Right. Uh, and I and I. I'm very happy that at this age, and I've just turned 80 now, uh, how, how wonderful it is at this age to look back and say, I'm blessed that I was wow. able to earn a living doing things that I really love. And yeah. I should mention, by the way, uh, you know, we have fans my age, but we also have fans who are eight and nine years old because right. Shadows has never been off the air. I have so to say, um, I, I really, I, I don't do very many of these things, but right. every once in a while, I'll, I'll uh, have this opportunity to meet fans in person. I'm yeah. doing it again at Lyndhurst, uh, uh, the end of October, actually, the 20 and 21st of October. Okay. Lyndhurst is where we filmed House of Dark Shadows. It's in okay. um, Terrytown, New York. And right. I, I take people on tours and, and then we have a kind of a cocktail party and, and a meet and greet and all of that. It is fun to now, see whole families show up. Sure. Now, it's now really um, Dark, Dark, Shadow, Dark Shadows, it's been adapted into different formats. 
There was the 1991 revival series and the uh, big film came out in 2012. I was in that with Johnny Depp. Yes. Directed by, by uh, Burton. I, in, it, it was. Um, Did you enjoy it, that movie? Well, you know, first of all, wasn't it nice of them to bring Laura Parker and David Selby and Jonathan Frid and me to London to right. appear in the film? But um, I think we all agree it it wasn't the dark shadows that we knew. No, no, it, it was it was, it was more, pretty. Yeah, it was a worn down yeah. version of yeah. And the one thing that we never did, and I don't think you should ever do it. Uh, is to take something like that that's already a heightened reality and then camp it up. It, it uh, you've got to play it straight. Yes. And and as soon as you start doing wink wink nudge nudge, uh, it becomes um, it becomes something else. Yeah, it becomes it, it, it becomes a yeah. cheap version of the real thing, right? Exactly. I don't I don't think it worked, but uh, no no no, no, you know, no. Nobody does a movie without thinking it's going to be great. You yeah, know? of course. And the whole thing with that is. Um, Dark Shadows is so iconic. You know, it's the black and white. It was the, um, <laughs> you know, it, it was like, you know, going into Dracula's, uh, you know, it's an old Dracula movie. You know, I remember coming home from school. I know, I know. I, I'm, like, I'm, fact, um, I'm not sure that I wouldn't have preferred that we stayed in black and white. First of all, there was no color when we started. It exactly. was about a year. It was about a year into the show when color television really uh, you know, became a thing. I, I'm not sure that we weren't the first show in the afternoon, first soap opera uh -huh. uh, to go color. And I remember because I was on the very first day uh, of the very, very first episode of Dark Shadows. And, um, and you know, makeup was, was uh, you never, you never gave it a, th a thought. I mean, you just did ordinary makeup. Right. But then when they decided to go to color, I remember for weeks beforehand, there was all this discussion of colors for costumes mm -hmm. and, and do we have to wear green tinted makeup to make up for this and that. Right. Oh, what a lot of palaver. And yeah. uh, on the first day of color, uh, we went on with uh, just our regular makeup and it was fine. Right, it was, right. Okay. But nobody yeah. quite knew what to expect. Sure, sure. and. Um... You know, but even now, when you think of Dark Shadows, um, I I watched uh, season two last week. I sat yeah. through season two. I think that was the first season um, Barnabas and you were on, right? Was yes, that, right? that would have been. Yeah, Jonathan came in and actually saved us from cancellation. Yes. Um, I think he came in. Uh, was it? Uh, we did 13 week cycles. I think it was the uh, the second cycle Sec that he yeah. Thank God, or or yeah. we would have been underwater. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's the one I've been sitting down and kind of reviewed last week because I knew, you know, there was there's a whole build up to you appearing pretty much. There was like two or three, um, two or three episodes talking about you, but not you being there yet. And then yeah. you make your appearance. And well, they, um, Josette, you know, I I wasn't meant to play Josette. Um, uh -huh. It happened very much by accident. Uh, I came in uh, one day to pick up scripts on a day I wasn't working and I saw the producer and the costume woman working with this clothes dummy on a dais and they had a fan blowing on her and they were photographing her and and I said what's that uh -huh. and they said, oh well that's the ghost of Josette she's jumped off uh, Widow's Hill and and right, right. Uh, and I said and they said uh, uh well, what do you think? And I said, I think it looks like a closed, a closed dummy. <laughs> <laughs> and so the producer said, well, do you mind stepping in for it and animating it? Right. And so they put the, the rags on me, all of those torn bits of lace. Yes. And, um, and, uh, and they put, uh, it was a mixture of talcum powder and baby oil in my hair. I, I just looked a mess. Oh, yeah. And, um, and they photographed it. And of course, with the fan on my eyes, they started watering. Uh -huh. And I looked pathetic. And when Dan Curtis, who was the creator of Dark Shadows, saw that that little film clip that they were going to use the following day, and that was rare that they ever did any film that they you know right. used, uh, it it occurred to him to have me play Josette. And the network and our director said, "No, you're going to confuse the audience." 
Uh, and Dan said, no, 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 I trust them to follow along. So I was the first person on Dark Shadows to play a second character. Right. And then, of course, everybody did. Uh, yes. Laura Parker played um, three, di four different versions of her character. I played four different characters. Jonathan played a couple of different versions of Barnabas. Right, 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 right. right. Time periods, how fun to be able to travel into different time periods. Yeah, it's just... Um... And again, it was so far ahead of the curve. You know, yeah. it really was. It was, you know, if you go back now um, and see kind of what it spawned, there was, it, you know, you could you could follow back just about any vampire, um, st any vampire storyline now, and it goes back to Dark Shadows. You yeah. know, you guys pretty much covered it all over the course of the seasons. So, um, so and Dark Shadows might be back. There's a... There's a, a wonderful writer named Mark B. Perry who has written uh, a new uh, version, an updated um, uh, version of Dark Shadows. And maybe when this strike is over and we're back to work, yeah. uh, there's the strong possibility we might have a new Dark Shadows on the horizon. That's pretty cool. Now, um, I, know you, I know you're busy. You're going to have to get going soon. But... Um, what kind of upcoming projects are, are in the works? Anything interesting on the horizon? Well, uh, I'm writing another uh, book, but I've, I've kind of had to put that aside a little bit for some for some other projects. I just finished doing uh, a film. Uh, in fact, the strike has stopped it. So, um, right. uh, but anyway, uh, it's a, a lovely little fun comedy, mm -hmm. uh, and I. Um, uh, and of course, I'm I'm working on the the bunny ears, uh, reissuing that. Um, actually, quite a few little uh, little projects. Even though we're okay. uh, on strike, and I'm going picketing tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I'm know, in New, I'm in New Mexico now, so um, oh, we we have a big film industry here now too. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Where are you in New Mexico? I'm right between uh, Santa Fe and Albuquerque. I'm in a town called <gasps> Rio. I have Rio. a friend who lives there in Placitas. Yeah, I know Placitas. I'm in Rio Rancho, not that far from that. Ah, I've got I'm a, Yeah, I'm a New Yorker. You know, I'm, ah, I'm well. Now. Yeah. Yeah, you're a New Yorker too, right? I'm in New York, yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to be picketing in Rockefeller Plaza tomorrow. Yeah. So, um, what else do you want to tell everybody before we say goodbye to you? I know you're in a rush. Oh, um, uh, well, I'm, I'm, um, I would love it if people would go to my website. I have yeah. a, a wonderful webmaster who's put together such a lovely website that I think informs everybody about uh, what's happening with not just me, but with Dark Shadows. And, uh, and there's, you know, the, some of the books that I've written are available there. And... Um, and it's also a fun website because I've put up a couple of videos with uh, old uh, film clips of things that I've done. So if you go to www.catherineleescott.com. Okay, so let's get that out there. And also you have a great um, memoir out that we didn't have a chance to oh, talk about. <laughs> you know, um, my, my, um, my husband, who was the founding editor of Los Angeles Magazine, which was uh -huh. the first magazine in the country, uh, he started that in 1960. He passed away 12 years ago from a neurological disease called progressive supranuclear palsy. It's like Lewy body dementia, which Robin Williams had. It's yes. like Lou Gehrig's disease. It's um, it's one of about five diseases that uh, that are progressive for which there is no cure. Right. And I was his caregiver for several years. So. I decided to write a book about caregiving for for that kind of condition for which there's no cure and you know you um, uh, you always know the end game but oh. uh, you know you're you're a caregiver right. and and so I, I I wrote Last Dance at the Savoy and also Now With You Now Without um, and those be, really became uh, memoirs. Um, and I have to say, I consider the, the book that I wrote about Dark Shadows and also the one I wrote about the bunny ears as memoir as well. Right. Um, very comfortable writing memoir. And it's, it's, uh, it's a wonderful way to tell actually a broader story. So um, 
if if uh, if any of your listeners are dealing with that sort of uh, condition, that mm -hmm. that uh, kind of neurological disease, often called Parkinson's plus, because it has uh, many of the the same things. Although somebody with Parkinson's can live decades. Yeah, my father-in-law. You know, my father-in-law. There's yeah. treatment. Well, my father-in-law, uh, my father-in-law had Parkinson's, and he was uh, bedridden, you know, for a good number of years. Yeah, but 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 uh, you, uh, there are some. I have a good many friends who have Parkinson's who aren't uh, who are living with it and living yes. well with it, uh, because there there is treatment. Yeah. Uh, but for these Parkinson's plus diseases, there is not. Right. So if you're facing one of those. Um, I think you might find Last Dance with the Savoy or Now With You, Now Without um, helpful. Uh, okay. they're, they're full of hope um, okay. and, um, and good advice. Well, good luck. And thank you for spending this time with us. And thank um, you. if you'd like to do this again, I'd love to get deeper and deeper, but I know we don't have time today, so. Absolutely, and and uh, and you might even enjoy talking to Laura Parker or one of my other friends on the- uh, I'd love to. The so, uh, yes, we will keep in touch. I'd be delighted to come back again. Yeah.